Okay, so this video is going to be a very unique video that I've never really done on this YouTube channel because in this video, we are going to be talking about the flow state in a personal, national, and also international geopolitical perspective, specifically focusing on China and the bigger aspects of control and release muscle regarding personal liberties, freedoms, compared to, of course, totalitarian states that try to squash independent action taught free will. Wow, that was a that was a mouthful, to say the least. Now, as you know, I've been doing different kind of videos all throughout the years, and this new style is kind of a walk and talk. And I feel very different doing these kinds of videos because I don't have anything planned to say. I don't have anything uh, really to show you other than this kind of stream of consciousness that just kind of randomly collects itself and comes out as I shoot these videos in one shot and one take. And I've been really enjoying the process of being able to sit down and be like, you know what? I'm not going to be on my buttocks anymore. I'm going to get up, walk around, explore different areas that I've never been to before as I'm walking around right now. And you guys get to see the landscape here in Granada that I am in right now. And at the same time, we're able to have a conversation and a dialogue that just naturally kind of sporadically happens. Now, uh, some would describe what I'm doing as going into the flow state, working on my release muscle, relaxing, not trying to control the situation, not even knowing where I'm going, never been to a situation, and letting the kind of moment take me uh, to wherever it is, the thought, wherever it is. And this has been very healing for me, especially after covering news uh, for over close to 15 years now, documenting, researching, and just doing articles, do, sorry, pardon me, doing videos where I just bombard you with articles and headlines trying to show you exactly what's happening. It's good to take a step back and to, of course, process the information, look at the information, and look at it from a different kind of organic, natural perspective. And there is something to say about being able to walk, being able to travel, being able to kind of pace back and forth. Whenever there's a major decision to be made, you always see a lot of people walking back and forth, pacing back and forth. That's because uh, walking helps you get into this flow state. It activates parts of your brain that disassociate it just from one kind of dominant left or right brain thinking, usually right brain thinking, which is just factual instead of imaginative. And it lets you get into this imaginative framework that is far more conducive towards uh, the now, towards ideas, towards thinking than just sitting there stagnantly because our brains work better when we're able to move around and experience different things at the same time. Now we're just here, some Looks just random construction site. I don't know what this route's going to take us, but uh, let's see. Uh, let's see where we're going to go. And the, the reason I kind of wanted to do this is because I've been trying to change things up. Because a lot of people have been talking about news fatigue. Have been. Let me check out this beach first. Have been talking about just being tired and sick, being bombarded with news, 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 information, information overload, over, over, overload, and them not being able to process everything. And this is me processing everything as I'm sharing it with you, which is the total opposite of what the mainstream media does. This looks like a little, little private beach here. But the mainstream media, and especially social media, what they do is they just bombard you with as much information as they can, getting you away from the flow state so you can't really process information. A lot of media is this fear-based trauma mind control that is used to, of course, control populations, control thinking, because when people don't think, when people just react and they're afraid all the time and they're traumatized all the time, uh, you don't have to convince them of anything because they're creating their own kind of worst nightmare. They're creating their own kind of situation where they don't, they don't really even get to wake up and smell the coffee, as they say, or wake up and, and realize the situation that they're in. And I believe a lot of people, especially that I know, are in this kind of derp state, in this kind of control state, in this kind of state where you know, they're, they're caught up in a situation that they don't like, in a job that they don't like, in a partner that they don't like. They can't do anything about it because they never get into that flow state. They never get into that relaxed state where they get to process stuff, look at stuff, examine it, and be like, hey, 
It's absolutely ridiculous that I have to pay this tax. It's absolutely ridiculous that the government has a fee for all these things that are just simple, common things. It's absolutely ridiculous that there's this government regulation. So that's, I'm just speaking for my own <laughs> personal experiences. On social media, we have the same kind of thing. Uh, you have to understand when you're consuming social media, when you're on things like Facebook, they are psychologically engineered. Facebook hires the top most uh, important um, scholarly scientists, psychologists to program social media in a way that makes you addicted to it. Because if you're addicted to it, they get to squeeze every last dime out of you. They get to make money off of you. If you're addicted to their platform, you get to have advertisements bombarded to you. And this is pretty much pushing the kind of, and working your control muscle. This is a weird place. Keep this picture perfect. Yeah, a lot of people litter as well because they're in this derp state and don't realize, hey, I'm destroying the environment around me. So. This is why meditation has been very important for me. It's been important for a lot of people. We're seeing a lot of people talking about meditation because it takes them away from this instant gratification, quick fix, quick information, low attention span, low energy vibration of just uh, stimulation that psychologists have programmed in social media to make you addicted to, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter is very egregious with this because they knowingly with their algorithm again when you're when you're seeing something on social media now you have to understand there's a special interest behind it there's either someone with a lot of money with a big industry behind it or there's usually someone uh, tied into a government that predictively is programming you the same time that they're supposedly allowing you to use this platform when something is free you are the product and we're seeing the byproduct of a total control grid society that absolutely doesn't realize the miserable hell that they're in. All they do is complain about the hell. And this to me is a larger symptom of top-down control. Sorry, I have to stop here and uh, take a photo of this cool picture that's happening here. But with you being the product, you're being essentially used. You're being uh, controlled in many different ways. And you can't deny the effects that social media, especially engineered social media by special interest, has had on society. Big data now is more valuable than oil on the world stage in its evaluation. Having information about people is essential for many governments and many special interests to have control. And in the United States, in the Western world, we're seeing this form of control being epitomized by, of course, social media. In China, we're seeing it in a more direct, more kind of brute force kind of way with, of course, the Chinese government putting pressure on all of its citizens, creating a social credit score, watching every single move they do, setting up facial recognition cameras that are far more advanced than we could even imagine with levels of sophistications that would scare the crap out of you that are being sold to them in cooperation with, of course, many companies from Silicon Valley that come from the United States, ultimately giving them the tools to try to enslave their population. Now, China is a very interesting case, and this is why I kind of wanted to uh, juxtaposition this entire kind of conversation specifically around China. Uh, China is, of course, in the news a lot in the United States because of it using its control muscle, of it not having a release muscle at all. It trying to control every aspect of people's unique individual lives that can't just be put in one particular box. And that's what China is trying to do because historically, uh, the Chinese territory is a very turbulent one. It's a territory and an empire that has seen many different leaders, many different conquerors. And that is because China, geopolitically on the world stage, is in not that good of a position. This is why China has been so much, uh, this is why China has been putting so much effort in setting up the South China Sea uh, bases because they are essentially landlocked, surrounded 
by a lot of governments and a lot of countries that had really bad relations <laughs> with them. And unless they're able to take the battle outside of the mainland, they are screwed with their resources. They are also screwed with their population. They're even more screwed. If you look at the Chinese population, it is predominantly male, predominantly in their 30s and 40s with very little females. So when you have males, usually when they have especially high testosterone, especially if there's not enough women for them, because there's not, because of the one-child policy that China has instituted in their kind of form of control, working that control muscle again, has created a situation where everyone's on edge. This is why I believe China is being um, as heavy-handed as it is on the world stage when it comes to issues like Taiwan, when it comes to issues like Hong Kong, because I believe they are terrified of their own people, because China has many revolts. China had many revolutions throughout its history. China has gone through a very turbulent uh, history and they don't want to repeat it. And with that fear, they think the answer is going to be control. I remember even watching one particular video of a police officer hitting a woman in China, unprovoked, just a police officer. You see this kind of brutality in the United States. But one thing that was different than the United States. The local people that were watching a woman being hit in this Chinese town decided to stand up and they beat the crap out of these two police officers, ripped them of their uniform in the middle of the street because they did something that they saw as an injustice. Okay, I'm gonna decide to walk back here, but specifically, this is also why China cannot allow Hong Kong to gain their sovereignty and independence that they are fighting for right now. Because if they do, it will inspire a lot of people that are living currently in China to also do the same. And this is why I believe we're seeing such grips of control because of insecurity of the people from a very, very unstable situation. Now, young males not having sex, uh, an economy that's going to go down. When you have populations decline, when you have you know, China that doesn't want anyone outside coming in and living amongst their own people, you're gonna have ramifications of that that will create a recipe for disaster. I mean, there's a reason, you know, someone like PewDiePie for even just talking about the situation that's unfolding between LeBron James and the NBA was banned, all of his content banned, any mention of him banned in mainland China because he brought up this larger idea that the Chinese government is absolutely afraid of. Now, to me, China is headed towards geopolitically a big disaster. I might be absolutely wrong with marvels of innovation, with technological advancements, they may somehow be able to counter it. But as of right now, in my own opinion, it's not looking good for them, mainly because they're too focused on power, control. And when you ever, whenever you have someone getting too powerful, they always get too cocky and always mess it up for themselves. Uh, it always seems to be a reoccurring trend, not only with individuals, but also with nation states. Empires always fail. And as China is emerging on the world stage, trying to, of course, challenge the United States for global hegemony, I believe that they personally won't be as successful. Now, it's still a very big battle, but with the, everything that I mentioned, specifically the mention of control, this is why I believe they won't be as successful and won't be as big of a threat um, as other people kind of make them out to be. And to me, this is happening because of this kind of failed idea that you could control things. Uh, you can on a certain level, but the more you try to control things, the more out of hand the situation will get, uh, the more you kind of hurt yourself, the more that things don't go as smoothly as if you just let go and allow things to happen. Uh, you know, you consider it on a micro level with you know, taking a dump. Keep holding that ish in, it's not, it's not gonna be good for your sphincter. Uh, that's talking about it emotionally. If you're holding emotional trauma in, you're most likely going to create PTSD and create very negative effects for yourself and the people around you by holding on to trauma, not processing it, not releasing it, not letting it go.
not allowing yourself to be free of that by accepting it and moving forward in a positive, more light direction. If you're a government, the more you tax, regulate, control people, just like the Soviet Union, just like Cuba, just like Venezuela, just like the state of New York, just like the state of California, the more negative consequences you will have because of that. That's my opinion. What do you think? Tell me if I'm wrong. I always appreciate uh, discussion. I always appreciate a debate. I hope you guys are enjoying these kind of long form walk and talk spur of the moment uh, stream of consciousness videos. And if you are, share this video.